Okay, let's talk, let's talk about um, uh, CDs and DVDs. When uh, uh, the first, uh, first uh, CD that ever came out, I think if I remember correctly, don't hold me to it, I think it was Billy Joel that recorded the first uh, album that was put on to CDs. All right? And uh, I think that was like 83, 85, somewhere in the 80s. I don't know. Anyway, so we had CDs. Anybody remember how much the very first CDs held? How much information or how many minutes, either one? No, 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 it was bigger than that. Close. Anybody got exact numbers for me? No? That's all right. Oh, somebody had a good number. It was 650 megabytes or 74 minutes. Didn't take long. A few years later, they upgraded that. They modified how the CD, uh, uh, the, the size of the CD, not the physical dimension, but the amount of storage space on there. And we bumped up to 700 megabytes or 80 minutes. And that's where we are now. The minutes are an important thing to remember here because it used to be, although there, that doesn't apply now, but it used to be that when you recorded a song onto a CD, it didn't matter if it started in MP3 format, which is only like one megabyte per minute roughly. It would automatically change it into the AV um, WAV format, WAV format, which is about 10 megabytes per minute, roughly. So you had to look at a CD as minutes as opposed to just size because if you were recording music onto it, even though you had 200 songs that took up 700 megabytes, you could still only get 80 minutes on there, which amounted to, what, uh, 16, about 20 songs, 20, 25 songs. Uh, that was it, yes? So the CDs now are only Yep, only six minutes. Laser Pardon me? About well, laser disc. Well, laser disc is an old standard. Are you talking about DVDs? No, I mean like laser disc and old thing. Oh gosh, well that's that do, those don't even exist anymore to my knowledge. I was just curious. If that means that I have I have no idea what they held. I mean, I honestly I don't remember. Um, you were gonna say something? Yeah, uh, there's some C players out there now and stuff. I've seen where you can actually upload an entire file to it and it saves it according to like the size of the file rather than Oh yes, that's true. That, that is that's true. Well, that's true as far as data was concerned now, but it's also true now as far as music. It just didn't used to be that way. But yeah, he's right. Now you can pretty much put on there whatever you want and uh, uh, whatever you can cram on there in MP3 format. But I, I've gotten so I've had upwards of like 120. Yeah, and that's true now. Didn't used to be that way, but yeah, it, you can cram. Uh, and again, that's a um, that's a um, an evolution of the CD player, not the CD. Remember, it used to be that CD players would only play the one format it knew, uh, the WAV file. It would record and that it would play only that specific type of file. So when you had songs on there that were MP3, it wouldn't know what to do with them. Now our CD players will play any music format you can throw in there or any standard one. Okay. All right. So we had CDs. What was our next step in CDs? DVD. Now sticking to CDs. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We could we could now start recording. Uh, CDs. So uh, remember, we have two things to consider. We have the pl mm -hmm. the players, and we have the discs. The players would be referred to as CD, R, W, read and write. But strangely enough, the the discs were referred to as CDRs. Okay, which means they started off blank and you could record onto them. So you would go out and buy your CDs and it would say CDR on there and you could record onto it. Okay. Then of course that changed over time and we went to CDR slash W. Interestingly enough, when we're talking about the disc, that means you can both read, or excuse me, you can read and rewrite. Read, uh, you can uh, write onto it and then rewrite onto it. Okay. Uh, and of course the players had to be able to 
write onto a rewritable disk. Do you follow that? They, had to, they couldn't just be able to be writers, they had to be writers that could write onto a rewritable disk. Whew. That's a tongue twister. All right, so that was our next evolution. Now we get into um, uh, DVDs. All right, so DVDs came out. And we had something similar. We had the DVD players. And uh, we, had, we got our movies on DVD. Then, of course, in time, we had blank DVDs. And we had two different formats out there. DVD minus R and DVD plus R. That made a difference because in the early days of DVDs, the minus or plus format referred to the recording, the, the, the manner in which the recording was created. Once it was recorded, it was a DVD. Didn't matter how it was recorded, it was a DVD that would play in any DVD player. But the kind of blank disc it started as was important because your players were either, or excuse me, your recorders would either be plus R or minus R, or one or the other. So if you had a DVD plus R recorder on your computer, you had to get DVD plus R discs. Same thing if you had a DVR, DVD minus R, uh, you had to get DVD minus R uh, DVDs, blank DVDs. You want to see that? Go to any store that sells blank DVDs and look at them. The DVDs can't come, the blank DVDs can only be plus or minus, not both. When you go into the store, you will see on the case, on the, on the round case, it'll say minus R or plus R. Does it matter now? Typically no. Because most DVD players these days, DVD writers I should say, have both have plus or minus on them. It'll look just like this. It'll say DVD plus minus R, meaning it can do both. So it'll see what kind of disc it is, minus or plus, and then the writing format will be appropriate. When it comes out, the plus and minus are gone. Doesn't exist anymore. Okay, does that make sense? Questions? Okay. All right, um, now, around this time, people or the um, movie companies uh, were getting uh, real nervous about going through what the music industry was going through. Because in the music industry, everybody was copying their CDs. Now, before I say any of this, remember, copying stuff is not legal. You should not be doing this, okay? I'm just telling you what's out there. All right. The movie industry did not want to go through what the, the, the uh, music industry went through or and is going through. So they tried something that was uh, about as short-lived as a firefly. Uh, they tried to do something that most of you may think is only because they wanted to have a bigger DVD, but it's not. What they came up with was dual layer, dual layer. So looking at a, this is just a real quick and dirty view here, but you have your DVD and you have your typical layer where the information is stored. Who's doing our DVD presentation? Okay, you'll be going over some of this more than likely. You have your layer storing the information, but as a normal DVD. But then they came up with a dual layer that stores information in two levels. Okay, so on most single layer blank DVDs, anybody know how much information that holds? No? 4.7 gigabytes is what a standard single layer DVD holds, okay? A dual layer, people expect that to hold 9.4 gigabytes, but that's not true. A dual layer only holds 8.5 gigabytes. Why is that? Because when the laser goes through and has to and reads the bottom layer, it needs to be able to have enough free space through the top layer in order to read the bottom layer so it can't be completely full. So they've got it all worked out in one way or another where there's enough free space up here to get through the top one to read the bottom one and that's why it's not completely double this. It's a little less than double. Okay? But the, the dual layer was created to stop copying as a copy protection feature. Well, that lasted about three and a half minutes. <laughs> it didn't take long before people were able to break that because the idea was you could read that, but you couldn't copy it. Wrong. 
So, what the end result was is we got more space on DVDs and as the legacy of what they tried to do with copy protection. But uh, so now we have dual layer out there. When you go get a DVD rented at a store, most of them, virtually all of them, are dual layer and they can hold up to eight and a half megabytes. That's just the industry standard now. They put their movies on dual layers. Not that it works for copy protection, but it allows them more space to uh, to put their movies on. It's also it does make it a little harder to copy because if you do want to copy the movie, remember you have to shrink the movie down in order to fit it on a single layer. Yes, you can go out and buy dual layer blank discs, but they cost a lot more. Like, what, four or five times the amount of a single layer. So if you do want a copy, I'm not trying to tell you how to break the law, I'm just telling you the technicalities of it all, that if you want to copy a a disc that comes to you on dual layer, you have to actually go through a shrink procedure in order to fit it on the lower cost uh, single layer DVDs. Okay? I've also heard about um, quad layer out there or something. Yes? Well, like, say you own a movie and you want to put it on your computer without like the disc. Can you save from it to your computer? Uh, technically, yes. Legally, no. I have to put all that in. Technically, yes, you can do that. Legally, no. <laughs> okay? All right. Um, so, we've got this dual layer. We also have something out there called 